What's up guys, Brian here in the lab and today I have a confession for you. My confession is, I'm bored out of my mind. <laughs> That's right, just like all you guys at home, we are stuck inside with this COVID-19 situation going on, social distancing, we're on lockdown, all of that, but that means we can't get outside and do much. So today I wanted to make another video something a little different, a little more fun for you guys. As you can see, this is not my typical setup. I've got my big flashes with my soft boxes here. I've got this piece of glass, and I have got my camera with the Canon MPE 65 five times magnification macro lens. Normally, I use this guy, the Sony 90 millimeter. Calm down, flash, we're not ready for you yet. Son of a <clears throat> Hello. Oh, you wanna you wanna sell me an extended warranty for my car? They're trying to sell me an extended warranty for my car. That's what I need. A scam extended warranty to get my credit card stolen. Where was I? Now normally I use this guy, the Sony 90mm macro lens for my gecko pictures. This guy is a highly specialized macro lens. It's variable magnification anywhere from 1x, which is what a macro lens traditionally is, to a 5 times magnification. Now that basically means you can get macro, macro, macro pictures super zoomed in at 5 times magnification. Often you'll see these advertised for macro photos. It's a little light ring, goes in your hot shoe, clips on the front of your lens, and it's supposed to put light right on the subject. These are crap. You don't want to use those. They don't actually put off much light. It's not nearly enough for good macro photos. So, today I got out the big flashes with the soft boxes. I have cranked these bad boys up to 11 for maximum light output. Now let's go get some geckos, set up this plane of glass, and take some cool photos. Alright guys, first up for photographs, we're going to do this beautiful lily white het exanthic girl. She's absolutely gorgeous. I want to see what that lily white pattern looks like up close. Let's take a look. glass tip the other way. I'm going to have her crawl on it and I want to see how close up of pictures we can get of their toe pads. As you guys may know they have really fine filaments, almost hairs on their toe pad that allow them to climb vertical surfaces and stick to glass like this. And I think it would be really cool to get some really up close pictures of those. Let's check it out. Let's grab another gecko and keep playing. Next up, I can't help but take pictures of our Azanthic pinstripe boy. I really want to also get pictures of his underside, his pores, to give you guys a real good example of what the pores on males look like. Let's try it.
this is super interesting. On this guy, I was taking a picture of the top of his left eye, and it looks like the outer surface, like the, the outer lens of his eye, actually has some sort of defect or possibly an injury, but I don't think it's an injury because it's like a perfect triangle with these little, almost like it's all, like the lens is all pinched together around this weird triangle. Super interesting. I've never seen that before. And actually looking closely at his eye just with my naked eye, you can kind of tell. I think it's actually a piece of stuck shed on his eye cap. A little piece of eye cap shed is stuck on there. He does have a little bit of shed on one of his crests as well, so I assume he shed very recently and just had one little piece of his eye cap didn't come off. I'm not going to worry about it too much because I'm sure it'll come off with his neck shed. And uh, I'm obviously not going to go poking at his eye to try and get it off and risk injuring him, but super interesting the kind of things you can see with this lens. Never would have noticed that otherwise. How cool is this? I'm loving these shots, but you guys know I got to see some more morphs, including two of my favorites, Ink Spot Super Dows and Confetti Line Super Dows. Let's see how those red spots look. I'm going to go grab a couple of our grow outs. This one's gonna be a little tricky. A couple months ago, I bought a whole bunch of baby morning geckos. This tiny little guy here. These guys are just kind of a pet project of mine. And as you can see, they are super, super jumpy, super quick. So I hope I don't lose this guy, but I wanna try and get some pictures of these guys up close because they're so small, it's hard to get a real good view on them. So let's see if we can get some pictures of a tiny baby morning gecko. I have here a cricket. Now obviously this is a dead cricket because a live one is just gonna jump away and I won't be able to take pictures of it. But let's give this guy a shot and see if we can get some neat photos of his eyes. Alright guys, now the way to get a really cool picture of your gecko licking its eyeball is, so I've laid my photo backdrop out here on the table to give us a nice soft matte black background. And then you want an adult gecko, a big gecko, and a calm one if you have one that's real placid because you need it to stay still. Then you get a spray bottle and you just gently spritz their eye like that so they get water drops on their eye and then it's a waiting game. It's a lot of patience and good timing. You just gotta hope that your gecko will sit still, which this girl's not gonna do right now, but you gotta get a gecko that you hope will sit still, let you spray it in the eyeball, and it'll remain sitting there long enough that you can get your camera, get set up on your composure, get in focus, and then it will lick its eyeball to clean that water off, to clear its vision, and then it's about timing, snapping that picture at the right time. It is really hard to do. It takes a lot of patience and a lot of effort, but man, when you get that perfect shot, it is worth it. Check it out.
way to kill a couple hours here while we're on lockdown. Stuck in the lab with the geckos is never a bad place to be. Absolutely a lot of fun. I love this camera lens. I am definitely gonna do more macro photo shoots to make some more videos just for my own amusement. If nothing else, this is a lot of fun. I gotta put this to more use, but I gotta go. I got some geckos to feed. Thank you guys for joining me. As always, AltitudeExotics.com, at AE Geckos on Instagram, Facebook. Check it all out. I really appreciate it. Next week, don't forget the full reptile photography guide. You're going to want to check that out. Everything you need to take great pictures of your geckos. We'll catch you later. Thanks, guys.